A woman who lived a life of luxury, being the lover of a wealthy man. She repented, converted, and today is a saint. Today's curiosities are about Saint Margaret of Cortona. Here are 10 curiosities about her. 10. Birth and Orphanhood. Saint Margaret of Cortona was born in 1247 in the small town of Alviano, in the Umbria region of Italy. Her childhood was marked by early tragedy, she lost her mother when she was still very young. With her mother absent, Margaret was left in the care of her father, who soon remarried. The arrival of the stepmother brought new challenges for young Margaret, who began to face a hostile and difficult domestic environment. The new wife of her father showed no affection for Margaret and treated her cruelly, aggravating the girl's suffering. Without the support and protection of her mother, and with a strained relationship with her stepmother, Margaret grew up in an environment full of difficulties and lack of love. This difficult family context shaped her character and influenced her choices in her youth, leading her to seek comfort and approval outside the home, and to experiment with a life focused on pleasures and excesses. If you are not yet subscribed to the channel, sign up to avoid missing any curiosities about the saints. 9. Life of Luxury during her adolescence, St. Margaret of Cortona made a decision that would radically change the course of her life. In search of escape and comfort from the oppressive environment in which she grew up, she ran away from home and found refuge and protection with a wealthy nobleman. This nobleman, a man of great influence and fortune, offered Margaret a life of luxury, very different from the hardships she had faced at home. Margaret threw herself into a life of worldly pleasures and excesses. She enjoyed the comforts and luxuries that the nobleman's wealth provided, such as extravagant parties, fine clothes, and banquets. Her new life was full of entertainment and pleasure, distancing her from the austere routine and trials she had known since childhood. However, this life of indulgences and superficiality did not bring the true satisfaction she expected. Margaret's time with the nobleman also involved a romantic relationship that was well regarded in society at the time but was not considered legitimate in the eyes of the Christian faith. She lived in a world of privilege, but she was also increasingly distant from the values and spirituality that had once been part of her life. The contrast between this life of luxury and her painful childhood accentuated the complexity of her personal journey, and the cost of her pleasures became evident when tragedy unexpectedly struck her life. 8. Conversion Through a Dog The event that marked the conversion of St. Margaret of Cortona occurred in a dramatic and unexpected way. After years of living in luxury and excesses with her lover, Margaret's life took a decisive turn with the death of this man. He was murdered during a journey, and his body was left in an isolated place. The tragic event was revealed through a notable detail, a pet dog that had accompanied the nobleman during the trip. When Margaret's lover was killed, the dog, seemingly aware of its master's tragic fate, returned to the city and sought out Margaret. The dog's behavior became a crucial sign. The dog began barking incessantly and led Margaret to the spot where her lover's body lay abandoned and decomposing. Upon finding the body in a state of decay, Margaret was brutally confronted with the reality of death and the transience of life. The sight of the deteriorated body served as a powerful catalyst for her introspection. She realized the futility of her life of pleasures and excesses and began to reflect deeply on her own mortality and eternal destiny. This moment of revelation led Margaret into a state of profound repentance. She began reconsidering her choices and the life she had led up until then. The shock and raw reality of death motivated her to seek a new direction for her life. Leave your prayer request in the comments below for St. Margaret of Cortona to intercede for you before God. 7. Public Penance. After the dramatic conversion of St. Margaret of Cortona, she sought ways to publicly demonstrate her change of life and repentance. One of the most striking gestures of her penance was her decision to attend Mass with a rope tied around her neck, a visible symbol of her humility and desire for atonement. By attending Mass with this rope, Margaret not only expressed her personal repentance but also sought a way to publicly witness her transformation. The rope, a sign of penance at the time, represented her willingness to endure suffering and shame as part of her purification process. She wanted her change of life to be evident to all, emphasizing her sincerity in seeking redemption. 6. Expulsion from the Parish St. Margaret of Cortona's decision to publicly display her penance and repentance was not well received by everyone. Her public demonstration of transformation, symbolized by the rope around her neck during Mass, had unexpected and severe consequences. Her stepmother, who already harbored resentments and disapproval toward Margaret, was one of the main instigators of the negative reaction. The stepmother, who had shown little to no affection for Margaret, saw her act of public penance as an affront. 
For her, Margaret's appearance at Mass with the rope around her neck was a challenge to her authority and her view of morality and religiosity. Rather than seeing Margaret's penance as a sign of true repentance, the stepmother considered her an intruder and an indignity to the religious community. Consequently, the stepmother made the decision to expel Margaret from the parish, effectively distancing her from the environment that should have been a spiritual refuge and community. This expulsion not only isolated Margaret from her community and the spiritual support she sought but also intensified her personal suffering. The rejection and hostility she faced demonstrated the depth of the difficulties she had to overcome in her journey of conversion. Despite the rejection, the expulsion from the parish served as yet another test of her faith and determination. Margaret did not let this adversity divert her from her path. Instead, her experience of exclusion reinforced her determination to follow the life of penance and seek redemption. She continued her spiritual journey, eventually finding acceptance and guidance in the Third Order of Franciscans, where her commitment to faith and penance was recognized and respected. 5. Admission to the Third Order of Franciscans. After facing severe trials and rejection, Saint Margaret of Cortona found a new path for her life in the Third Order of Franciscans in Cortona. Her journey to admission into the order was marked by an intense period of repentance and penance. After being expelled from her parish, Margaret went to Cortona, a town where she hoped to find a new beginning and a space for her spiritual transformation. There, she found the support she sought from the Franciscan friars, who were known for their emphasis on a life of penance and service to the poor. Margaret approached the Third Order of Franciscans, an institution that allowed laypeople to dedicate themselves to the spiritual life and Franciscan practices without becoming friars or cloistered nuns. Margaret's admission to the order was not immediate. The friars, aware of the depth of her conversion and the seriousness of her commitment, imposed a three-year probationary period on her. During this time, Margaret faced severe challenges and practiced a form of penance that many considered extreme. These trials not only tested her determination but also helped shape and deepen her faith. During those three years, Margaret dedicated herself intensely to a life of prayer, penance, and service to the needy. The rigorous discipline helped her strengthen her spirituality and overcome the temptations and challenges that could have diverted her focus. Her determination and humility impressed her superiors, and at the end of the probationary period, she was formally accepted into the Third Order of Franciscans. 4. Mystical Experiences. During her life of penance, Saint Margaret of Cortona experienced profound spiritual enrichment that manifested in various mystical experiences. These encounters not only strengthened her faith but also confirmed the sincerity of her conversion and her commitment to religious life. One of Margaret's most significant experiences was having visions of Jesus. She had moments of intense contemplation in which she saw and spoke with the Lord. These visions were often accompanied by profound spiritual revelations, where Margaret received teachings and consolations directly from Jesus. These experiences helped her strengthen her faith and deepen her personal relationship with Christ, providing her with a more intimate and direct spiritual perspective. In addition to the visions of Jesus, Margaret also had visits from her guardian angel. The angel accompanied and guided her in her spiritual journey, offering counsel and support during her trials. The visits from the guardian angel were moments of great importance for Margaret, providing her with divine guidance and reinforcing her determination to follow the path of penance and devotion. 3. Intercession for the Souls in Purgatory During her life of penance, Saint Margaret of Cortona dedicated herself deeply to prayer and sacrifice on behalf of the souls in purgatory. The belief in the efficacy of prayers and penances to help these souls reach heaven was a fundamental part of Margaret's spirituality. She believed that her religious practices not only benefited her own soul but could also intercede for the liberation of souls in purgatory, a state of purification before entering the heavenly kingdom. Margaret devoted significant time to praying and offering sacrifices for the souls in purgatory. Her commitment to this practice was so intense that, according to accounts, she had a special ability to know how many souls had been liberated thanks to her prayers and efforts. This mystical ability to know the impact of her prayers was one of the signs of her deep spiritual connection and the effectiveness of her commitment to the cause. The belief that her prayers could effectively help souls find peace and enter heaven served as a powerful incentive for Margaret to continue her spiritual practices with dedication and fervor. She offered sacrifices, fasts, and prayers not only as a form of personal penance but as an active intercession for the souls awaiting purification. 2. Canonization. Saint Margaret of Cortona was canonized in 1728 by Pope Benedict XIII, 
officially recognizing her sanctity and the impact of her life of penance and devotion. The canonization process involved verifying her exemplary life, virtues, and the numerous manifestations of her holiness and mystical experiences. The decision to canonize Margaret was based not only on her life of prayer and penance but also on the testimony of many people who were touched by her spirituality and the miracles attributed to her intercession. Her path of conversion, her dedication to the souls in purgatory, and her mystical experiences were key aspects that contributed to the recognition of her sanctity. Pope Benedict XIII established February 22 as the date for the liturgical veneration of Saint Margaret. This date was chosen to coincide with the day of her death, which occurred in 1297. The choice of this date for her feast serves to remember and celebrate Margaret's legacy, promoting her life as an example of true conversion and devotion. 1. A theme for reflection. The life of Saint Margaret of Cortona offers a powerful theme for reflection on death and the importance of living a life of faith and repentance. Her journey of spiritual transformation, from a life of excess to deep devotion and penance, illustrates in concrete terms the possibility of renewal and preparation for the encounter with God. Saint Margaret underwent a radical conversion that began with profound repentance, triggered by the sight of her lover's body found in a state of decay. This moment of shock and reflection on mortality led her to deep introspection about the fragility of life and the importance of living according to spiritual principles. Her life serves as a call for all to reflect on the inevitability of death and the need to prepare for the final encounter with God. Margaret's experience reminds us that true repentance and spiritual transformation are possible and often essential for a life of genuine faith. She demonstrated that even those who may have strayed from religious practice and lived recklessly can, through sincere conversion and dedication, find a way back to God. Her constant practice of prayer and penance, as well as her effort to help the souls in purgatory, reinforces the idea that living a life of faith is not only a personal preparation for the encounter with God but also an act of love and intercession for others. Margaret's life encourages us to consider how we are living now and reflect on the state of our own spirituality. And with that, we come to the end of another story full of curiosities. Don't forget to leave in the comments which saint you would like to see featured on the channel next. Until the next story.